that put me up there. I learned that trick from my nephew, he's nine. He came up to me the other day. He's like, hey, Jared, how you doing? I was like, I don't know. Uh, in my mind, I was like, I feel like the universe is immoral and indifferent, and <laughs> civilization is slipping slowly into a state of just solid mediocrity, which is proven, by the way, by the filming and production of the movie Piranha. <laughs> and in my mind, all this stuff is it's going on. I'm seeing this stuff, and, and I was like, oh, I'm doing fine, buddy. How are you doing? He was like, had two pieces of cake today. <laughs> it's so simple for them. Like, it's for me. Like, I feel like my life is just this tar of self-consciousness. Like, it's like... Like, if I get up in the morning, I look in the mirror, if I see any sort of, like, shape happening in the mirror, I will wear a jacket. I'll wear a jacket in 100 degree weather in a swimming pool. <laughs> like, I just try to pass it off like it's exercise. I'm like, oh, I'm pretty sure this is how the Marines do it. I saw it in a movie. <laughs> it's just like a cycle of, of these thoughts that happens. Like, it'll be one little thought. Like, oh, it's hot outside. Maybe I should wear shorts. And then like 10 seconds later, I'm laying on the floor just thinking, life is a desperate vacuum of nothing. <laughs> and then, and then after a short seven hour bath, <laughs> I just think to myself, you know what, I did have a snack pack earlier. And it's all better. <laughs> Now I'm down here. Um, I saw <laughs> this was this was fun. I saw today a grown man dressed in Boy Scout garb. <laughs> There's nothing stranger to me than a grown man dressed in Boy Scout garb. Because like I don't know whether to salute him or like help him cross the street. I'm not sure what the situation is. Because you like even if you're 37. You're still a Boy Scout. Like, there's, you don't become a Man Scout. <laughs> like, that just doesn't happen. Like, the best I've heard is that they become, like, an Eagle Scout. But if, if you're going around saying that you're an Eagle Scout, honestly, like, you were, like, a cape away from rolling dice and shouting, Ah, 20 points dexterity! <laughs> On the road to Morador. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing that bothers me is I, I, I work, I'm a graphic designer right now, because I went to art school for six years, and I got a diploma and a darkened heart of broken dreams. <laughs> <laughs> so now, <laughs> now I'm a graphic designer at this place, and I have like ten bosses. And it, what drives me nuts is my boss will come in and try to relate to me, and he'll be like, yeah, you know, Matt was out of town, I had to check his pool because he thought he had a leak, and then I went over there and sure enough it was out. But you know, if Matt's pool went out of commission, he could buy a whole new pool if my pool broke, man, I'd have to have somebody come by and fix it. <laughs> I'm like, really? Like, that's not relatable to me. Like, he gave me like, oh yeah, man, shit, last week, Man, I was out in my jacuzzi, a.k.a. Walmart kiddie pool. <laughs> I spilled some bacon on my chest, and my wife's Yorkshire Terrier jumped in and popped the side. <laughs> yeah. No amount of hard work will get back that. $4.93. <laughs> Alright, that's going to do it for me. You guys have been a lot of fun. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. A lot of shorter people. <laughs> Give it up again for Jared Cole. Next comedian I've had the hugest crush on for the longest time. Everyone's a comedian. <laughs> but seriously, please put your hands together for Mr. Bill Metzger. I would like to point out that I 
know for a fact that my girlfriend is in more pictures with David Marie Garland on Facebook than she's in with me. But I think that's hilarious. <laughs> um, so, what the fuck happened to the brontosaur and the triceratops? Apparently those aren't dinosaurs anymore. Yeah, what the fuck? What the fuck? I know, it sucks, doesn't it? But, I mean, it made me think I was mad at first. But then it made me think, like, how do they even know what they're doing in the first place? Like, I'm surprised those are the only two ones that they discovered were not real. Like, what are they doing on the field? They're extinct. How do they know? I think it's just a bunch of a bunch of uh, archaeologists out in the field just going like, dude, this bone would look totally sweet on like, this dinosaur's face. <laughs> like, I don't know where this bone goes, but looks like a leg, but let's just put it on his head. No one's going to know. <laughs> They're extinct. Who's going to know? <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, have you guys seen, did you guys ever watch TGI Fridays? <laughs> so of course you did, because you have a beating heart and you're an American. Um, of course. Uh, did you see Dinosaurs, the show? Yeah. 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 Did you see the last episode? Yep. It, it is the most depressing thing I've ever seen on television. So, the last episode of that series of dinosaurs, like the Jim Henson puppet thing, the the dinosaurs go extinct, and like, like the win winter comes, and all the dinosaurs are like huddled in their house, and the baby dinosaur is like, is like, are we gonna be okay, daddy? And the dad like looks, is like, I don't know, and like looks at the camera, and the camera pans out, and it's just a winter destruction, like all around their house, and then it just fades to black, and then everyone in the show dies. <laughs> they all die. That is the most horrific thing. That's like if the series Friends ended the finale with 9-11. <laughs> Like, could this be any more tragic? <laughs> this next joke is um, based off of the novel Push by Sapphire. I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> so, look for the similarities, because they're there. You might have to dig deep. Um, is it just me, or do yard sales look like the house just threw up all over the place? <laughs> like, it looks like the house just, like, went out and had a bunch of Oshkosh Bagosh shots. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, VHS drop dead Fred bombs. <laughs> and it came home, get it home. It came home. And uh, it ate like a Monopoly board that's missing some pieces, and Marvin Gardens is gone. And, uh, I don't know why I think it was so funny. And the, basement, and the basement's like, oh hell no, I can't keep this shit down here. And then Sunday morning was just like, Bleh! all over the yard. That's what I think about every time I see it. Oh sweet, they've got Baby's Kids on VHS. I've been looking for that. <laughs> Thank God I stopped at this fucking yard sale. <laughs> Why is that funny? <laughs> um, have you guys been inside of a fucking Build-A-Bear workshop? What the fuck are those places? What? Why? I know! Are you, do you own one, or...? <laughs> yeah, let, let, can, I, can I please say a show of hands of people who have actually been inside of a builder or workshop? Not very many. That leaves the rest of you in wonderment, I'm sure. Do you have one here at Short Pond? Is there one in Richmond somewhere? Yeah. Oh, there is. You guys don't do, like, fair trade build bears like. <laughs> Go corporate, right with the teddy bear, work with teddy bears. Huh, surprising. 
They have, did they have a gigantic bear on the outside of the thing? The one I went to had like a huge bear, and you walk in, and he's like grimacing at you. It's like, felt like I was in an Indiana Jones movie. <laughs> had to get past the bear. Those places are horrible inside. I don't know why kids like them. They should be terrified every second. Like, you go and you pick a bear, and they have like, like bins and shit, and you just like grab a bear, and then you bring it over to this like machine thing, and they like jam this thing up its bum. And just like blow fluff into it, and then an attendant like takes this this like hard thing and just like jams his, his hand up there and just like stamps it on the bear's chest. And I don't know why kids aren't just like ah! 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 I don't, they don't need to see. They're, you know, it's exactly like if there was like like a deconstructed bear workshop with like real bears. Like that's how terrifying I think it is. It should be to kids. Like they bring, choose your bear and they bring it out and then just shoot it in the face. And then pull out its all its insides out its asshole. And then the kid like throws the carcass in a bin and they're like, yeah, I deconstructed the bear. Here's a little question I want to ask before I go on stage. How shitty does a shitty, shitty movie script have to be in order for Matthew McConaughey to be like, no, sir, I will not do this film. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> the lead character is not hunting for treasure. I don't know how to act if I'm not hunting for treasure <laughs> and fucking my ex-wife while I'm hunting for treasure. Okay, thanks, guys. <laughs> Does he also sit on chairs backwards? <laughs> but seriously, y'all, uh, y'all ready for your next comic? Yeah. Boring, I'm serious. But seriously. Don't, don't say that. <laughs> Enough fanfare, put your hands together, now, yeah. for Joe Hackett! Yeah. Yay, David Marie Garland, how about a hand for that guy? Yeah! I'm going to get right into it, get some advice for everybody. This is how... Uh, that's how you shouldn't spend your Labor Day. Uh, you shouldn't get invited to your friend's river house, and as soon as you get there, complain that she doesn't have jet skis. <laughs> and then drink about three beers, walk out, dive in the river, and swim about a half mile upstream to the pier that's owned by a retired Navy admiral. Pull yourself out of the water, like a little puke dribbling down your beard because you just overexerted yourself. <laughs> and ask that retired Navy Admiral if he's impressed enough with your swimming abilities to let you ride one of his jet skis. <laughs> <laughs> then you shouldn't, you shouldn't also, about three hours later, after consuming a lot more beers, uh, hop on a makeshift raft you've fashioned out of a noodle and a, a mesh seat. <laughs> kind of flail paddle your way back up the river and start yelling taunts at him from the middle of it. Just be like, hey! Hey, I'm an asshole. Admiral asshole. Are you prepared for naval Armageddon at the hands of Commodore Kickass? <laughs> I didn't think so. He's just under a jet ski. It's an easy program. <laughs> That's not a good plan for Labor Day. <laughs> are, you guys, are you guys like me, uh, unable to jerk off to the website ujizz.com because it's too goddamn bossy? I'm a grown man, I don't need you to tell me what to do. I'm wearing a t-shirt and one sock, I think I can figure this out. <laughs> Yeah, whatever, my other socks in my mouth. So what? Don't ask questions on the internet. <laughs> Do 
you think there's on 9/11? Do you think there was anybody that was like with the TV on in the background and like came right when the second plane hit? Oh shit! Oh shit! Now I gotta tell that story. Christianity. <laughs> it was when I found out that the youth director at the church I was being made to go to had just come back from a David Lee Roth solo concert. <laughs> it's gotta be bullshit, guys, right? Come on. He's like the opposite of Jesus. <laughs> Cocaine. That's it. <laughs> uh, I was like, heaven, to me, heaven just seems like such a shit proposition. Like, it's always, like, two half-drunk ideas somebody just kind of randomly threw together. Like, oh, yeah, you die, you get, uh, you get clouds and, uh, your family. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Who came up with that idea? Or they just like, hey, guys, go out in the field, and, uh, here's a bottle of absinthe. Just think of some shit, uh, <laughs> to keep the sheeple going, all right? Let's give it something optimistic. Wait, I get to spend eternity with my uncle? Trick question, I fucking hate him. <laughs> it's like, you get a planet and 72 virgins. That sounds like a great idea until you put about 45 seconds of critical thought into it. <laughs> like, are, are there houses on the planet? Is there infrastructure, or do I just have to start it all myself? <laughs> and what, like, how, what, what do you mean, virgin? Like, how old? Do I have to wait around a while? <laughs> Are they just waiting in a line when I get there, like, 72 strong, and I have to have sex with every single one, like, down the line, to an ever-diminishing audience? Is that how this is gonna work? <laughs> I get to grow old and watch as my children fuck each other for lack of a better option. <laughs> sounds great, yeah. Suck me up. Like, come on, think this out. If you're gonna tell me, like, leave me alone with heaven, at least tell me there's like a pussy cupcake water slide that I get to ride for all eternity. <laughs> Twenty-five years old. 25 years old and still in college. Yeah. My girlfriend fucking, my girlfriend yelled at me the other day. She, she's a, I'm the certifier of your dreams. <laughs> and I just shot back and I was like, I wish I knew what that meant because you're doing a shit job. <laughs> I'm 25 years old and still in college. My parents, my parents were 25. They, had, they were married, they had a kid and a house with furniture in it, and cars, <laughs> and promising careers. I've got like 58 bucks, and half a bottle of bourbon, but we can hang out. Uh, <laughs> living the dream. <laughs> I'm 25 years old, I'm still in college. And I made up my degree. I spent seven and a half years on the degree I made up. I can't wait for that job interview. <laughs> What's your major in? Bullshit I made up. <laughs> oh, what's that say about you? <laughs> Put out a lot of effort to be as lazy as I fucking can. <laughs> I, just, uh, I just got back from LA. Uh, seven. I wish that happened every time when I'm saying there's a black guy. But he said that that is weak. Hey, what? <laughs> oh, <fuck. laughs> fuck me for building a joke. You're just talking a deep voice in the corner. Just <laughs> 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 
got bigger tits than every girl here. <laughs> I'm done with you. <laughs> yeah, I remember. Oh yeah, there's this kid, I was there and there's this kid, uh, I saw him three times, he was sitting in front of a Popeye's chicken, he's like 14 years old, tops, and he was panhandling. Uh, the first time I walked by him, he, he was like, hey, hey man, hey, hey, bro, buy me lunch, buy me lunch, we're right outside of Popeye's, I'm hungry, just uh, buy me some lunch. And I ignored him because that's what I do to poor people. <laughs> I walked, I walked by him like the, the second day I was there and he was smoking weed with a bunch of his friends. Uh, and then the third time I walked by, he tried to do the like Popeye shit again. I just like walked by and he's like, dude, bro, 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 I'm hungry. I'm hungry, buy me lunch, bro, 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 buy me lunch. Go home. Go, go home. You're 13 years old. Go to your house. There's probably a full cabinet with food in it. Just go there and eat it. There's probably like Cheez-Its and Cheerios. And, like, I, ate, I ate butter and noodles for three weeks to afford to be here. And you're asking for food. You have braces. You have braces on your teeth that somebody who cares about you spent thousands of dollars on. Just go to the house of that person and eat their food. And leave, leave me the fuck alone. Like, you're not under You got a skateboard with four wheels on it. Why are you Money. Just go to your house. Like, you're not underprivileged and a refugee and brown. Like, just go to your house. There's food there, you little fuck. <laughs> uh, I've been working on not getting angry recently. It's, it's going well. I've tempered out. Like, I either get really angry or I don't care now. Like, I can't have passionate discourse, just like, whatever, or FUCK! <laughs> There's, like, not an in-between. I can't have passionate discourse with people. I can't debate stuff. I'm just like, WHATEVER! Or FUCK! <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, and I have a Blackberry. I'm not bra bragging about it, because I just need to know this for the story. Uh, <laughs> But recently it's been fucking up, uh, like the, there's like a trackball in the middle of it, and you need that for literally everything that phone does. And uh, <laughs> recently it's been fucking up, so whenever I click it, it just types in star and pound alternatingly forever. <laughs> and when I try and hit delete to delete the star and pound, it's just types in 14 over and over again. Because <laughs> that makes sense, because my Blackberry's got a 14 button. <laughs> <laughs> so I was, I was driving to work the other day, and I was running late, and I was trying to call so I didn't get fired, and uh, I, had to kept, I had to kept trying to dial the number, and it was just star pound, star pound, fuck, uh, and then delete, delete, 14, 14, fuck, fuck, and when I get really angry, I get like paranoid delusions about the world around me, and uh, I just started picturing this like really underpaid Chinese developer sitting in a sweaty room somewhere in a third world country just laughing his ass off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you want to call your boss? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so sorry. Should have paid him more than 14. Thank you.